California dreaming. Okay, the iPhone 13 hype is real. The excitement is building up as we approach the launch of the new iPhone. And the question I've been getting the most here is, should I get the 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max instead of the iPhone 13? You might be in the same situation, or you could be thinking of living Android, for example, but you're not sure if the iPhone 13 is the one for you. So I thought I'd do this video to help you with your decision. In this video, we will talk about when the iPhone 13 is a good choice, and why it might make sense for you to go for that shiny new iPhone. But we're also going to talk about why I think for the right budget and the type of usage that the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max will be the best bang for your buck. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews and I'm here every week. Almost forgot the iPhone 14 is coming as well in a year's time. Come on. We are now two or three days away from actually seeing the new iPhone 13. If you're watching this after the California streaming event, then you already seen it. But maybe you're still not sure whether to go for it or not. And if you're coming from an older iPhone like the 7 or 8 or even the iPhone 10, the iPhone 12 Pro is a great option. I'll explain why. Or throughout the video, I might say 12 or 13, I'm really talking about the Pro range here. And notice how I didn't include the iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max. There's a reason for that. If you're coming from an iPhone 11, I'd say that that's when the upgrade to the 12 doesn't really make a lot of sense. Unless you really care for that improved camera on the 12, I was absolutely gutted I had to sell my 11 Pro Max to get the 12 Pro Max because it is a nice upgrade, but I lost a lot of cash on that for, you know, for very marginal improvements. In less than a year, my 11 Pro Max went from 1300 to 700. In terms of value loss, I think that's a ridiculous amount, right, for a phone in less than a year. I think it was like 11 months for it to go to how far it cost originally. But what is someone else's loss could be your gain. So if we apply the same logic to the 12 Pro Max, there will always be a lot of people who purchase the 12 Pro Max outright and don't really mind losing that money. And I can already see pre-owned 12 Pro Max with 256 gig storage being dropped to below $800. Okay, they're still locked to AT&T or Sprint, for example. But to give you an idea, Apple are selling the same model for $1,200. So off the bat, you're saving $400 if you were to buy that today. All right, it's pre-owned and it may not be in pristine condition, but as discussed in my last video, these phones have barely left their houses because, you know, 2020 was a dumpster fire, wasn't it? And they will be in good conditions, not only externally, because obviously people are just dropping the phones on the carpets instead of the tarmac, but also from a battery perspective. At home, you tend to charge the phone more because you're always near a charger. So from a battery perspective, it will be in good condition as well. This 12 Pro Max here, which I'm passing on to my wife, look at that battery health. It's still above 90% after a year of usage. So you can see it's not brand new, but that is in pretty good condition and will last at least another two years if, you know, well looked after. Okay, Alex, that's great. I'm saving at least 400 bucks here, but you know, what am I missing out on? Taking the fear of missing out out of the way, you know, keeping it fairly rational here, the main upgrades are probably gonna be the display and the camera, right? There will be plenty of other improvements, of course, but the most noticeable will be in these two areas. So if you do go for the 12 Pro Max instead of 13 Pro Max, as an example, you're probably gonna lose kind of, you know, you're not gonna get the portrait video and AI-based filters and ProRes recording and things like that. But if you're coming from an iPhone 8, 7, or even 6, let's be honest, you know, the 12 Pro Max, you know, will blow you away anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much if you can't stretch your budget to $1,000 or $1,100, which is usually where the Pro range starts, because you can think about the 12 Pro and Pro Max as an option. I would definitely consider that. Right, on the display front, I'm gonna be slightly controversial here, and let me just preface this bit by saying mm -hmm. that for heavy usage of gaming and watching content for hours and hours, absolutely 120 hertz promotion display is gonna obviously be a major deal breaker for you, uh, especially if you're coming from an Android device that already has that 120 hertz refresh rate. But I think for the majority of people, 120 hertz display, you know, after a while is just a bit nicer than before. There, I said it again. Sure, it's smoother and we can almost guarantee that Apple marketing will make this sound like it's something that never existed before, but it is one of those things that most people can live without. Deep down, you know, not only because it's a bit nicer than before, but also because it's gonna be a, an adaptive 120 hertz display. Without geeking out too much here and sending you to sleep on this one, what that means is, you know, as you probably know, is that the 120 hertz refresh rate will only kick in when needed. For the majority of time, the display will be dropping to 60 hertz and even below that if they want to. So brightness and contrast are likely to be better as well, but you know, deeper blacks and really sharp images, 
even when using the iPhone outdoors. So that will definitely be better. But again, the 12 Pro Max is no slouch in that department. You know, when it comes to being able to use the iPhone 12 in direct sunlight, it does lose to a device like the S21 Ultra. Outdoors, the difference was noticeable, but not that much. But when using the 12 Pro Max indoors, there's really not much between them. And ignoring that annoying notch, it's actually a very pleasant display. Very accurate colors, just very smooth, beautiful. You know, there's no gimmicky saturation going on here. And, and the video capabilities on this thing, you know, for straight up, point and shoot, even up to 4K 60, really excellent quality. You can do loads with that. Oh, it doesn't do 8K or it doesn't do portrait videos. Okay, and look, I'm not trying to diss Samsung here. You know, this is what 8K and portrait videos look like on the S21 Ultra. 8K crops to a point where you need to be really distant from the action and there's no stabilization. So, you know, the image looks really shaky and portrait video just, I don't know, how do I put this? sucks you know it's barely usable in my experience unless you're in perfect lighting and even then he adds this very fake looking haze around the subject uh, you know it's a bit like what they do in zoom and microsoft teams it's yeah they blur the background and that's kind of it so yeah it's one thing to say that you can do it and another thing to say that you know it can be done really well and we never know until we really get our hands on the iphone 13 and test it for real you know, Apple maybe will do exactly the same things and, and it will be no better, but based on track record, we can expect them to really deliver on this. Again, I'm not trying to diminish the S21 Ultra. After all, it's been my main device for the last couple of months and there's a lot that I love about it. I'm just giving you this perspective so that you don't get blinded by marketing and, you know, start to think that you must have these certain features. In this tech industry, it's becoming important maybe too important in my view to, to be the first, you know, for, for that quick success and you know, I think it's much more important to deliver something well and play the long game, which is what Apple in recent years have been great at. So that's my case I put forward for the 12 Pro Max. If you're getting value from this video, it would mean the world if you gave me a thumbs up. As a small channel, it's really important so that you know, YouTube can recommend this content to other viewers. The end result is this channel and this community grows. I then get to create even better videos for you. So it's a win-win situation, I'd say. And if you like my stuff, you know what to do. Ah, and don't forget the bell right next to the uh, subscribe button. And I promise I'll try not to spam you with my videos, but I will try and be as regular as possible, doing my best to bring you a down-to-earth perspective in tech. So just to recap on the pricing, Apple at the time of recording are still selling the 12 Pro Max at the, you know, kind of brand new pricing. The 12 Pro starting at $1,000 and the 12 Pro Max starting at $1,100. So, you know, for that 128 gig storage. But in the open market, in the secondhand market, we already started to see these prices for the unlocked iPhone 12 Pro Max. 256 gig for 750 just sold last week. It's like, you know, $1,200 versus 750. It is pre-owned, but if it's in good nick, you know, that's a bargain. For what this device is, you know, I feel sorry for the person selling it, but this could be it for you. And after the Apple event, it's almost guaranteed that we will see even lower prices. Not great if you're here trying to get rid of your 12 Pro or 12 Pro Max, you know, I've been there, to, you know, to upgrade to the 13. And I really hope that if that's you, that you're cool with that. But it's great news if you want to upgrade from a much older iPhone or Android, but you're not keen on throwing over a grand on the 13 Pro or Pro Max. The 12 could be the new 13. I hope this helps you, whichever device you go with, or even if you just decide to wait for the next one, I will be here reviewing them, reviewing accessories for it. There's already a few boxes here to review when it drops. You know, I'll be comparing them, testing them. So hopefully I'll see you and your smiling faces on the next one. Bye. California dreaming. Take me out to California. Take me out to California. I feel the day. Draw